that you, you are the paramount power, we took power from you to the extent that we put a region, but you are now a free country. Sardar Patel took the task of integrating them. Out of 600, 150 chose to go with Pakistan. 450 was remaining. Sardar Patel completed 449. At that time, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru said, Kashmir is my own town, it's my home state, so I will handle it. And we know what a mess he made of the whole thing. <laughs> when I was a minister, I looked at the documents and I was surprised to find that we went to the United Nations and then declared publicly outside that Kashmir will be finally settled according to the wishes of the people. Because the Indian Independence Act of the British Parliament specifically says that if any king signs an instrument of accession, he does not have to take the opinion of the people of his state. And once he signs it, it is irrevocable. It can't, the question cannot be reopened. The king of Kashmir signed the instrument of accession. And therefore it became an irrevocable part of India. And there was no requirement that he should, the wishes of the people should be ascertained. There was no requirement. The 150 kings who merged into Pakistan, they did not ask for the wishes of the people there. There were some where we could respect the instrument accession. The Nizam decided that he will not join Pakistan or India. But no sooner he decided that, he began engaging in butchery of those Razakas which were there, they started engaging in butchery of Hindus. And the people of Andhra, what is now called Andhra, the Hyderabad state, they started running towards the rest of India. And at that time, Sardar Patel sent the army to the border. He didn't enter. But Nizam saw the force and he signed the instrument of accession and became part of India. The same thing happened in Junagar. The king there decided he will merge with Pakistan. It was a Hindu majority state. He decided he will merge with Pakistan. But then once he decided that, he started invading all the other neighboring uh, states which had merged with India. So they all appealed to Sardar. So Sardar sent the army to protect these. But no sooner the army reached these neighboring states, the Junagar king with 500 dogs, he left for Pakistan. I don't know what happened to the dogs on the way, but the Junagar fellow ran away. And there was nobody. So the Indian army took it over. And the Janagar king never made a representation that he should be allowed to come back. So those are two exceptions. In the case of Kashmir, it was a clear decision that it will be part of India. Signed. At that time, Farooq Sheikh Abdullah also accepted it. But Edwin Amount back and said, no, it's not good, you know, it doesn't make a good impression. So you must take the people's opinion into account. Jawaharlal Nehru, of course, thought that Edwina's appointment of opinion was always more important than the Indian opinion. <laughs> I don't want to go into the reasons for that. But, <laughs> but the fact is that it's an inalienable part of India. If you question the instrument of accession, then you are questioning Pakistan also. Because Pakistan is created by the same act. You can't say I have this selective part, this act, part of the act I will accept, this part of the act I will not accept. Now, after creating Pakistan, if the people, Muslims of what is now called Bangladesh, used to be part of Pakistan, 
decide to come into India. That means the Muslims are willing to live with the majority Hindus. So the premise of the Indian Independence Act has been uh, vitiated, which said that because the Muslims do not want to live along with Hindus in a Hindu majority area, therefore we have to carve out an area. So I have proposed that, tell the Bangladeshis, please take your people back. If you can't, then according to the opinion expressed in the British Parliament, we have to get one third of your territory. Because one third of your population has come to our country. And if you don't agree, then I'll have to take it from you. For long years, our military has fretted that this, when we want to go to Assam, we have to go through Jalpaiguri, Darjeeling. It's a thin strip of only 40 kilometers, I think. Above is China, below is Bangladesh. They said if the two of them one day decide to cut us off, Assam will go. So I, I had the minister there was briefing me. I said, why don't we, what, what should we do? They said, we need a corridor through Bangladesh. So from where to where? From Khulna to Silet. Through Khulna to Silet. So I said, well, it's going to be difficult. But today, recently I measured in the map, what is the area above line drawn from Khulna to Silet? It turned out to be exactly one third. <laughs> so send your army, I'll take it over if they don't agree. Otherwise, they can take back their Bangladeshis. Who those Bangladeshis are, Tapan will identify them. <laughs> that is the kind of Hindu unity we want. We have agreed voluntarily to partition our country. There was never any Pakistan. But having agreed, the terms on which we agreed, whether we like it or not, we agreed, the terms on which we agreed should be respected. If they don't, then we'll have to start at the initio. Now, you see, in one other thing which sometimes the Muslim and the secular crowd gets angry. When I mention that there are 3,000 prominent temples on which mosques stand. Many years ago when I was law minister, I was negotiating on this Babri Masjid. It was still not demolished. And the Babri Masjid Action Committee was headed by Sayyid Shabuddin, is a good friend of mine. And he agreed with me that if I can prove that below the masjid there, is a, there was a temple, he would personally go and demolish that masjid. But unfortunately, our government went out. I could not establish a commission to go and dig below and get it out. Now, of course, it's been established that there was a temple. The archaeological survey conducted, I think, in 2002 or 2003 on the direction of the Allahabad High Court. And they found that there is a temple below what is now the remains of the Babri Masjid. So in st strictly st on that basis, it should be returned. Same thing with Kaya, Kailash, uh, I mean, excuse me, Kashi Vishwanath. You can see the masjid standing on top of a temple. You can see Bindavan. There are many temples. But I think the Hindus would be quite satisfied if the Muslims voluntarily gave up these three masjids. And it's very easy for them to give it up. Why? Because a masjid is not a religious place. Who says that? The constitutional bench of the Supreme Court of India in a judgment, 1994, 
Ismail Farooqi versus the government of India. While discussing the Babri Masjid demolition, they say, Masjid is a building because it is only for facilitation of reading namaz. Muslims can read namaz anywhere on the railway platform while going by an aeroplane in this room. Namaz can be read anywhere. And therefore it's just a building to facilitate reading namaz. So you put a building a little further away. In the case of Babri Masjid, the position is even more ridiculous. Because the man who demolished the Ram Mandir and built that masjid in the honor of Babar, his name was Mir Baki. He was a Shia. And the Islamic principle is that masjids are managed by a Mutwali, which is a hereditary post. It comes from father to son. So, this Mir Baki appointed a Mutwali who was a Shia. And his great grandson, great grandson, is still alive, living on the other side of Sadhu River in Ayodhya. And he has given to Ashok Singhal of BHP an affidavit that I, Mutwali so and so of Babri Masjid, hereby declare that we have no interest in keeping this masjid. We want a Ram temple built there. We request the Hindu community to build us a masjid across the Sahib River. <laughs> so who are the people who are creating this problem? I'm not going into the question of de demolition of the masjid. Whether it was authorized or unauthorized, I'm not into that question. There's a court case going on, let them decide. But I am saying that who is, when the Mutwali, who is the sole responsibility, was the sole responsibility under Islamic law about what to do with the masjid, he says that you can take it, but why, who's stopping you? It is the Sunni Waqaf board, which has no status there at all. The Shias of India say, Mandir Banado, we have no objection. But these fellows say no. And the Allahabad High Court in the judgment, you know, three judges, they wrote separate judgments. There's only one, one point they all agree. The Muslim judge and the two Hindu judges all agree. And that is that the Shia Waqaf, the Sunni Waqaf board has no locus standi in this dispute. <laughs>